I want, we're waiting on one of our speakers, so we'll give it just a minute. I mean, I think we are, I don't see him yet. That I'm aware of. Are you looking for a friend? I am. Yeah. He had e <clears throat> emailed me that he was dealing with some six people. So I hope, hope that's not what's keeping him. Oh, I think he just registered at the very last minute and I didn't see it. So I, he should be getting a link right now. <laughs> and then we have, I think many of us have received news this morning or yesterday that Judith Rowe passed away. And so Bernadine was sharing some recollections of her before others joined. So hopefully y'all will also um, share some of your thoughts and memories of her since she's fresh on our minds today. Yeah, <clears throat> Judith was a real dynamo. She really uh, got New Jersey. I was so impressed with the New Jersey librarians from the very beginning with the social responsibilities round table. The, the New Yorkers and the New Jerseyans, they didn't just talk, they did things. And they scared the hell out of ALA because they, they would come in with all of these great ideas and they wouldn't shut up until ALA did it. So uh, that's where we started. We started with CERT and Godard, I think carried that tradition. Sometimes it got us in trouble, but are you gonna, at the beginning we had uh, at one point, 1,200 members. Are you going to kick 1,200 members out of ALA because we wanted to do things? So it was a lot of talk and it scared some people, but, but we got a lot done. Well, so Bernadine, I think- first, shall I, shall, shall I start? Or? Yeah, go ahead. That's what I was say, since you've already kind of kicked it off, go ahead and start. And then if Fran joins, we'll let him go next and okay. then Sandy and then Dan. So y'all jump in and share, share what you know. Yeah, Fran was, has been an incredible uh, member of Godard. Uh, talking about Fran, uh, Godard, which started as a social responsibilities round table, Task Force on Cataloging and Publication and Government Documents. And uh, the reason I started going to ALA in, in uh, 1968 was my first ALA, it was in Kansas City. And they had one program on documents. That was it, nothing else. And there was no place to go to talk to documents librarians that we didn't even exist as far as they were concerned. There was a public documents committee you practically had to be into Alzheimer's before you got appointed to it. And then you got appointed for four to six years. And uh, so I tried to go to one of their meetings and they refused because they said they didn't have enough room for another person. And if they let me come, that would open the gates and let other people. <laughs> uh, so I de uh, decided that then Margaret Lane, many of you remember Margaret, she became the chair of the Public Documents Committee and she invited uh, the Godard, well, the docs people, because we were from our task force to a meeting in January, 1971. And Mina Peace, who's one of the founders of Godard, the International Docs Task Force, she gave a presentation on her uh, J classification system. And Yuri Nakata was there from Illinois and a variety of people. And we were at the program and we saw they were, they were working on a research study. That's about all they were gonna do. They were gonna invite somebody to the 71 uh, June meeting in, in Dallas. And that would be uh, Superintendent Kling and Edna Kainley, they came to that meeting. I wasn't there because I was having a baby. If I'd had them a week before, I would have brought them with me. But uh, so anyway, it was uh, very difficult to get to these meetings and then they weren't really doing anything. 
So after that meeting, Yuri and Mina and a number of other people, we caucused out in the hall and said, we need a membership commit group. Uh, we need to be able to vote. We may be able to invite everybody to belong to it. And so that's when we started thinking about how would this work? So at our CERT task force meeting in June of 1971, we voted to change the name to Government Publications Task Force and the Public Documents Committee was very unhappy. Um, I wasn't there, but Margaret Lane came, but she didn't tell anybody she was a chair of the Public Documents Committee. She went back to her committee and they, they basically said, well, how dare these people uh, change the name? They didn't get our permission. Well, we didn't think we needed their permission, which we didn't. So, but Margaret got on board. I mean, she, she became an incredible member of the GODOR, it started the state and local documents. She was the first chair of it, did an incredible job. Uh, so we, uh, I decided to make peace with uh, Joyce Ball, who was the incoming chair of the Public Docs Committee, who said they were thinking about a round table, but we thought there's no need to think about it. We thought people were gonna do it, so we did it. Uh, and so we, it is our, the one history that Lois did of Godard kind of implies that Joyce was a leader in this. She was not, she just to save face for the public documents committee had to go along with it because we were gonna do it. So when we got there to January 72, uh, we got the whole thing done in one meeting, which has never been done before. We got the, uh, all the committees to agree, the council to agree, uh, membership, the executive board. We got everybody to agree in one week. And then we were in business. So then we, hit, we uh, got a lot of new people that came in at that point as a result of our petition drive because you only needed 100 petitions signed, but we got 300, which was unheard of. So we got great people that came in like Mary Ellen Troutman uh, from Kentucky, I mean, I mean, Oklahoma. And people don't know about Mary Ellen. She is the one that down in June of 1971 had lunch with the superintendent of documents and uh, convinced him he should start the Depository Library Council because he wanted to make changes, but he didn't know, quite know how to do it. So he not only started it, but he invited Mary Ellen to be the first member. She told him she wouldn't join unless he invited me to be a member, which he did. He basically told her, I want troublemakers uh, who will speak up and help me reform GPO. And that's exactly what happened. Then Mary Ellen also, uh, he wanted to send the 3 million government docs get rid of them at GPO. And he asked Mary Ellen to take him to Oklahoma. And she said, I can barely deal with the, with the documents I've got at my, you know, at the state library. It's better to go to LC or National Archives. LC being rather arrogant, said, well, we'll just take some of it. We'll get rid of the West. And so the superintendent decided to send, to send him to the National Archives. And the National Archives recruited Mary Ellen to come and help uh, set up that, up that three million documents. So she's the unsung hero. And she's the one behind the scenes that tried to save those documents. Because at NARA, they were getting rid of them. They were letting researchers come in and take them away. Uh, they weren't up, you know, they weren't interfiling, so on. And she was the one that kept letting the Congressional staff know what was going on and that we would, we, the Joint Committee on Printing, put pressure on NARA to do what they agreed to do. So I really want to pay tribute to Mary Ellen Troutman. And there were a lot of other people like uh, Arnie Richards, who was a, uh, a runner. He helped integrate the, the, uh, the runners in South Africa. He was a 
documents of librarian of Kansas State. Uh, and uh, he is the one who pushed for committee prints to get into the libraries. He also was co-editor of Documents to the People with me. So we owe it to Arnie to get the library community to uh, really push. And that was one of the first things I, was, I did when I went to the Joint Committee on Printing. Visited 55 committees, convinced them to go committee prints to positive libraries. So we have a lot of heroes that, who uh, were the founders of Godard, who did a great, a lot of things that uh, they probably don't have appreciation for. The one funny story about Arnie, he would come to EPA where our, and we'd put the documents through the people together. He came back from going to the bathroom. He said, I met the sweetest man in the bathroom. And I think, oh my God, he turned out to be the regional director. And he told him all about documents to the people. So I get a call from my boss saying, bring every issue of documents to the people to my office immediately. So I take them all down there and I wait for a couple hours. Is he gonna fire me or what's gonna happen? He calls me and he says, this is great. You're doing a good job. Are the other EPA librarians helping you? I said, no. He said, well, ask them to help you. Because we, I, we were criticizing government and documents to the people that they weren't doing their job. But at EPA, they were, we were kind of the renegades. We, uh, we suspected everybody in the government of breaking the environmental laws. So fortunately, I had a wonderful boss who not only uh, supported documents to the people, but he gave me a bronze medal for starting the library and doing documents with people and so on. So you don't usually have a wonderful boss like that as a librarian. And then because I was a troublemaker for Godard, because Godard put together all the things that were wrong with GPO, but what we did, we said, this is the way to correct the wrongs. You know, join OCLC, use MARC format, uh, enforced uh, the 1962 Depository Act, get those non-GPO documents in, inspect libraries that never opened their boxes, uh, support documents librarians who are unionizing, like at Chicago, University of Chicago. One of our <laughs> founders was fired because she started, tried to start a union. Yeah, Bernadine, I hate to cut you off because I know you have much more to share, but I do want to pass it on to our other speakers. Okay. So, so there will be many more opportunities, I'm sure, and hopefully we'll have more of a conversation as we go through this. But Fran, do you want to spend some time sharing some of your go to recollections? Be pleased to. Thank you so much for organizing this. Um, it's a surprise. <laughs> Um, I got involved with uh, Godart in about 1974, after it had, had just begun to be organized, when um, because of the um, uh, involvement of Godart and, and with the, uh, and the then Depository Council, um, they organized a meeting of regional librarians. And I happened to be the, the librarian at the Detroit Public Library. Um, uh, and so my boss got a letter from the public printer, uh, the director of the library got this letter, and uh, inviting a representative to come to a meeting of regional librarians. Well, I wasn't active at that point. I was, had only been the, uh, region, the librarian uh, in charge of government documents there uh, for a couple of years and sort of just got my feet wet. Well, um, uh, I went to that meeting. I was sent to that meeting. Uh, my boss uh, sent me. Um, and uh, lo and behold, I walked into this room, not thinking I'd know anybody. And there was Ridley Kessler, who was the documents librarian at Chapel Hill, and also a regional librarian, um, and actually a high school classmate of mine. <laughs> Surprisingly, we both came from a small town, Hendersonville, North Carolina. and. Uh, where his mother was the high school librarian. And uh, uh, he was uh, also a, a, a wonderful documents librarian uh, who's now passed away. But 
uh, that got me very interested in participating in ALA since uh, what I found was the community of, of documents librarians who I could ask questions of, who could suggest things, um, and we could discuss our best practices of what we were doing and, and uh, helping to solve problems with uh, organizing the documents. Um, and so uh, I started coming to ALA and got involved right away with uh, Bernadine and uh, um, uh, Godard people. Um, it was, uh, and then I also started going to meetings of the Depository Library Council. Um, and I guess I spoke up a lot because I got very involved. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the, of course, what I was particularly involved in were some of the efforts to um, uh, collect fugitive documents to make the program more comprehensive. Uh, one of the jobs I had at the Detroit Library as the regional librarian was to go through the monthly catalog every month and order everything that was not sent to the library. Because there were many documents back then who had a little star uh, by them indicating GPO was cataloging it, but they weren't sending even to a regional. And so I would write uh, to the agency or through DocX, a program at the Library of Congress, I would try to flesh out our our collection to um, include things that uh, was uh, that were not sent to us, and which is why a few years after I was no longer the documents librarian, I moved up the ladder, um, and Paul Thurston, who succeeded me, um, worked with CIS in developing their committee prints collection, and they copied hundreds of our committee prints um, uh, to digitize them for the uh, collection. Um, as, as other libraries also participated to, to make that collection comprehensive. Um, what I uh, got involved with heavily was um, on behalf of Godart, participating in ALA to get attention to documents. Um, uh, Bernadine and others were my mentors in um, uh, doing that. She and I, the way we got to some of the leadership in ALA to get attention for Godart was we would go to every cocktail party at the conferences, at late night cocktail parties and uh, uh, with, with members and so forth, but uh, particularly the leadership of, of ALA and uh, members of council. And so we uh, uh, forced ourselves to <laughs> go to these parties, but, uh, by getting involved with ALA, we also got involved with the Washington office. And we worked with several very good people there who were doing a nominal uh, uh, support for uh, government documents. But with our pushing, they began to be more involved in uh, uh, supporting uh, GPO's uh, budget appropriations requests and so forth. Um, for the depository program. Um, that led eventually uh, in our efforts within Godor uh, to improve things at GPO, we eventually got involved in uh, attempting to get legislation passed to improve the program. Um, and uh, the, the several times we've done that historically, um, in, in either case, did we succeed in getting the legislation passed? But what we did succeed in doing was uh, influencing GPO and other government agencies to uh, uh, make some changes that they could make administratively to put more emphasis on the program. And uh, so I look back and think our efforts were not wasted. They did achieve uh, some of what we were concerned about. And administratively, working with GPO on behalf of Godort and then on the Depository Council. At one point, I was chair of both groups at the same time. That was a little bit much. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, uh, we worked on things. Bernadine has just mentioned um, in terms of um, getting GPO to switch over to the MARC format, to um, uh, use AACR2, to uh, use LC subject headings to 
um, uh, prepare GPO in a sense for the integration of that information, the government information into the, the work of libraries um, and the library systems. Um, because with a monthly catalog as the only index for the documents, um, we had to refer people who might want a government document to that. Now we cataloged some documents at, at, G, at GPL, but we couldn't catalog everything. So there were some things in our, our catalog as a reference to important documents, but um, the, uh, the reliance on the monthly catalog was an extra step for the public to have to use. And uh, eventually uh, having standardized uh, cataloging, um, it was more possible to have more things into the regular library catalogs. Um, I have to say just uh, in general, the, uh, the, the enthusiasm and work of other documents librarians and the friendships that, that were developed over the years were so gratifying to me. Um, I, I really viewed our work as a collaborative, super collaborative effort. Um, because it took people in every state willing to write letters to their uh, Congress people for support. Um, it took uh, the effort of everyone uh, supporting the Depository Council and the, developing the recommendations that they made to GPO um, to uh, affect change within the system. And I have to say, we had some wonderful people um, at GPO who worked with us, um, including Carl LeVar, the, the superintendent of documents. Um, and uh, sometimes people weren't quite on the program. Some of the people who got appointed superintendent of documents were uh, not uh, uh, really very open to, <laughs> to suggestions. Uh, but uh, we were lucky to have people in the administrative offices of GPO and, and the public printers um, uh, who were interested in and supportive of um, uh, the documents librarians. Uh, through a, ser a series of flukes, in a sense, I got appointed superintendent of documents as the first librarian to, to be appointed. And I give credit to Mike DiMario, who uh, was the uh, uh, public printer and with whom I'd worked over the years, lobbying and commenting on documents and I, we were on committees together. Um, uh, but he recognized documents or, or government information was really the future of GPO and wanted the depository program and the SUDOX program to be um, uh, more, to be highlighted within GPO and uh, to have librarians highlighted more. So, uh, he, he appointed me for that. But uh, all in all, um, I look back at a career and an influence that I felt um, was not just an ordinary service as a librarian, because I think of librarianship as a service profession and uh, uh, always appreciated that, whether I could help people directly or indirectly as an administrator. Um, but I think uh, it, it, it being involved in documents and helping to promote access to government information is a, not just a higher calling, but it's a, a, a service to the public, the larger public, by supporting um, uh, civic engagement um, on the part of the public in terms of knowing things about the government that we've made more available. So um, I think that's my initial comments. Uh, yeah, and that was perfect. I mean, I'm trying to give you all each 10 minutes and you <laughs> hit it almost to the T. So thank you so much. And there are several in the chat saying that you were SUDOC when they first became depository <laughs> librarians. So close connections and fond memories, I'm sure. All right, so now we're gonna hear from Sandy. Okay, well, like Bernadine, I was a documents librarian before Godort was formed. 1968 was the first ALA I attended as well. And, uh, and I didn't go again until uh, 1972 when Godort was formed because then there were, there were um, meetings to attend. Um, 
one of the reasons I think that, that um, the documents librarianship evolved at the same time that Godor was, did because the Depository Library Act was passed in 62, but then the Great Society legislation began being published or uh, organized in, 19, in the mid 1960s. And that generated a tremendous number of publications that hadn't been there before. Uh, there had been certainly government li uh, publications, annual reports, you know, major reports, but libraries were able to handle those and some of the major libraries had cataloged those into their regular collections. But when you start receiving hundreds of documents every week, um, libraries, cataloging departments no longer wanted to deal with them. And so many libraries set up separate collections and uh, appointed a documents librarian. Well, go to where was particularly important because you would be usually the only librarian in your library that dealt with these publications and nobody else wanted to touch them or organize them or have anything to do with them usually. Um, so that made your colleagues that you met at at annuals and midwinter meetings and depository library council meetings, especially important. And, and I think the support and friendship that um, the colleagues that I have through Godort are, were, you know, very important to, to my career. Um, some of the things, uh, initially, I think Godort focused on, um, the organization and best practices uh, for handling government publications. But as we moved into the 80s, when, which is when I was um, chair of both the council and the um, GODOR, uh, suddenly the government was restricting uh, more so than they ever had before what they were just what they wanted to distribute. One of the things that uh, I remember particularly was we had received and there was a separate program for reports from the Atomic Energy Commission. Some of them were in paper, but many, many of them were from the uh, the laboratories um, around the country, and they were in microfiche. And in 1983, somebody had the brilliant idea of restricting the access to these. Now they had been in libraries since the fifties. Um, they probably weren't heavily used, but they had been there and were available for the public. And they were going to suddenly classify all that information. So I remember Barbara Ford and testified in Chicago and I testified in, in Washington uh, not, to, not to restrict these. And that was one um, fight that we won. They backed down and that was dropped. The other thing that we worked on during the 80s was they introduced the Paperwork Reduction Act. And again, this was trying to restrict what they distributed to depository libraries. And I spent a lot of time working with other organizations, the Association of Research Libraries and many of the other non um, uh, library organizations that were in DC um, to prevent, uh, try to make things still available. Um, I think one of the other things that, that Gildort has done is they, many, not only DTTP, um, which started from the beginning, but they've also published an, a number of publications, the citation manual uh, for government publications, the cataloging manual that uh, Bernadine uh, did. And through those uh, publications, we really formed partnerships with publishing agencies, the Congressional Information Service, um, the Redex, some of the other uh, publishers that, that helped us uh, along, along the way and provided us financial support basically, and, and many of them still are. Uh, so those were uh, some of the things, but I think as Fran has indicated, some of the most important things that I got from Godor were, um, 
the support and the friendships um, that we formed over the years in terms of, you know, and I worked with both state publications. So I was on Margaret Lane's committee of eight. Uh, I worked with international. So David Raskuska and Bob Shaft and some of the uh, other international documents librarians uh, helped me along the way. Um, so those, those are basically my, uh, I think my recollections that haven't already, that Bernadine and Fran haven't already covered. Well, thank you. And in the chat, Dan pointed out that Trail has now digitized much of that AEC content. So <laughs> right, kudos yeah. to y'all to keeping it in the public domain. So Right, right. Yeah. And so Dan will pass it to you. And I do want to mention that Dan will be receiving the Child's Award this year. So congratulations. And I hope folks will be in DC to actually see him and receive that. So Robbie, it does make sense because he is very childlike. <laughs> I think there are many that might agree with that. Sinead, go to your room and shut the door, please. <laughs> At, uh, well, it's still morning here in lovely Tucson and is only about 91 here. So, um, you know, it's not going to get too warm until late this afternoon where we will hit our second day in a row of triple digit temperatures. So uh, I want to thank uh, Robbie for putting this together and for you all attending. Um, I just want to preface my remarks by, by saying a few things that number one, I'm not a founding member of Godort, although I perhaps look like it. Um, the second one is that uh, I ain't never had a job. I've always just been a documents librarian. And so uh, I kind of came into this profession in a backdoor manner. Um, I actually started working in a government documents department when I was an undergraduate student. I got hired because I could type. And it just <laughs> progressed from there. <clears throat> and then um, I went to uh, graduate school. University of Kentucky, and about a year or so before that, I went to work for Sandy Mackinich, who was one of my original um, mentors, and she deserves a lot of credit uh, for what I've accomplished and what I've been able to do in Godard all these years. So I want to make sure we get I give a shout out to Sandy. Um, my start in Godort was rather uh, interesting because I had just started working at the University of Kansas under Donna Kemp, another great mentor of mine. And um, <clears throat> I'd gone to the 1987 Depository Library meeting that was held in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And on the plane ride there, there was a gentleman sitting in first class who, as I walked by, I kind of recognized, but I couldn't put the name with the face and then um, I later I heard the flight attendants going, did you see Mr. Rogers? Did you see Mr. Rogers? And so I land in Pittsburgh and I'm standing literally next to Mr. Rogers um, waiting for our luggage. And I talked to him for a few minutes and I asked him if, how familiar he was with transportation services from the airport to downtown Pittsburgh. And he asked where I was going. And I told him and he said, well, that hotel is right next door to my uh, broadcasting station. So I started out with a ride from Mr. Rogers. And, uh, you know, so then I go to my first meeting and in the back of the room were a number of people that were later referred to as the bad boys of the back room. Steve Hayes, Jack Salser, uh, Gary Cornwall, Tom Anderson, uh, Sandy Peterson, Susan Toulis. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm sure I've missed a few. Fran, you might be able to fill in some of the blanks. At any rate, Jim Veach, at any rate, I'm trying to make my mark. And I'm sitting with all these people that I know are stellar document librarians. They have really, you know, grabbed the flag and carried the cause. And I want to be just like them. And so somebody goes, hey, during the question and answer, why don't you go up and ask Don Fossidal, who was the superintendent of documents at the time, what he does for his uh, salary at the time was about $87,000. <laughs> so I go up there and I go, hey, Mr. Fossil, what exactly do you do to earn your money? Well, um, you could have heard a pin drop at that point. <laughs> I get back to Kansas the following day, and this is still at the time when you could go to the gate and, my, and Donna was waiting for me at the gate. And it was late in the evening when I landed in Kansas City. And she's like, 
what the hell did you just do? I've gotten phone calls and phone calls and phone calls. So um, I made my impression with the bad boys in the back room and at some point became its de facto leader. I, I'm not sure how that happened, but, um, you know, I, like I said, I broke in with, with a number of people who were already very well established in the documents community. Um, Fran mentioned Ridley Kessler. Um, Ridley meant a lot to me. And uh, there's hardly a day that goes by that I don't miss Ridley. And I know Fran grew up with him and, you know, we could share thousands and thousands of stories and in, impressions of Ridley, but he was really uh, a guy that took me under his wing and I learned a lot from him. Um, so I was fortunate that I got in as, as Grace York would refer later on that uh, the Godort salad days, you know, uh, Godort was well established, not only in the depository community, but also within ALA and um, with all the other uh, library associations. So we were really kind of leaders at the time uh, in terms of dictating some of the policies we wanted to see set with GPO, some of the things we wanted to see set with ALA. Um, in fact, I'm sorry, I can't find my t-shirt, but uh, there was one ALA president who was so upset with Godort that she mentioned in a meeting that Godort does not make policy. And so we all had t-shirts made that said that. And we would go when Nancy Cranick was the ALA president, we would go whenever she was, and we'd sit there in the back of the room with our Godort does not make policy and smile at her. It was fun being a rebel at those times. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I was very fortunate because, like I said, I was mentored by a great group of people. I also want to say that back in 1987, when I was looking for a job, both Sandy, well, Sandy offered me a gig at Yale at the time. And then later on, Fran recruited me to go to DPL. I'm sure they both are glad that I didn't go there or join them in their <laughs> escapades. Um, at any rate, um, you know, I, I was just very fortunate. I get pushed by guys like Jack and really to get involved in go to leadership. I was fortunate to, to be involved. And, you know, I, as you can tell, I don't have any uh, boundaries. So I kind of have this stream of consciousness that I'll go up and speak to. But I do recall that uh, after I made that com, asked that question to Don Fosadol, he'd later said that hell would freeze over before I ever became on a member of Depository Library Council. A few days later, he said the same thing about Steve. So uh, Steve and I know that hell has frozen over at least twice because we both have been on Depository Library Council. Um, but like I say, I, I have just been, I've been blessed with, with the people I've had a chance to work with and learn from, um, great experiences, uh, uh, you know, and one of the things I always liked about the membership of Godort was that we would go to these meetings and we would have our own set of meetings and we would argue and argue and just, you know, get in these really, really, uh, great discussions about things. And after everything was said and done, we'd all got me, you know? So, I mean, it was just, it was, that was one of the, the, the most, I, I think, uh, experiences I, that I relish the most was we could argue a lot. We remained friends. We always had the organization and we always had government information uh, at the forefront of our discussions. And we always tried to do best, but we each had an opinion and we, we, none of us were afraid to express it. Um, but we always um, made up and we, we remain friends uh, until this day. So, uh, you know, those are just some of my memories. Um, and I miss Lois Mills too. Uh, no one's met Lois Mills, but I wanted to say Lois made a, a real impression on me. In fact, she took me aside after I asked Don Fossil and she looked at me and she said, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but that was a great question to ask. <laughs> She was one of my mentors, too. She was at Western Illinois when I was in Iowa. Yeah. So she, thanks for letting me share. I appreciate it. <laughs> if I could interrupt, too, and say a memory of Lois. She and I uh, were lobbying together and uh, in Washington, and we'd go into offices, and she could be the grandmother, and then I could be... <laughs> <laughs> the third person talking about this, that, the other, but she, she was great. Yeah, <laughs> as a lobbyist. 
So y'all have touched on a few thing themes that I just want to kind of circle back to and that have also been percolating in the chat and that is the great mentors that we all have had through Godord. I know I have been a benefactor of great mentorship and friendships within Godord. I think all of my what I would consider my best professional friends I've I've met through Godord. So for me it's been a wonderful experience and opportunity as well and i know we had at least one question in the chat and that was um, ideas for promoting govdocs but i do want to invite anybody in the call to unmute and ask questions or put them in the chat but i i, I guess i was not aware at how how active y'all were in the early years to ensure that we have access to some of the materials that we have access to so that's quite a legacy that we need to work to carry on, I think. Mm -hmm. but what else? Uh, I'd like to say that the reason why I was able to succeed on the Joint Committee on Printing to get members of Congress to do things that they never even thought about or didn't even know about was because of Godort. You need somebody on the outside to raise hell. So the staff on the inside can say, Look at that, so-and-so is demanding this. What are we gonna do? And then my Senator would say, when they come into lobby, ask them, what the hell do you really want? Tell us, put it in writing. I can't read your mind. And I'd say to the Godort, whoever was lobbying for Godort at that point, put it in writing because if you don't, I'll go in and tell them what I think. And that might not be what you think probably will be, but it might not be. So it's been so important that Godard continued uh, to lobby and to uh, meet with their own members in their districts and, uh, and talk to the staff and that needs to happen in every state. You need to have somebody who's constantly on the phone with a, with a staffer of a member. And it's the staffers that will remember, it won't be the member because the member is so busy, has so many committees, so many commitments. Uh, the only time that I, I went in and I, I lobbied my Senator Tester, who's the most incredible Senator there today. He's doing real things. I went in to lobby him. There was a railroad lobbyist there at the same time. And the railroad lobbyist said, well, what do you think about this and that? And Senator Tester said, I don't know what I think about that, but I do know what I think about libraries. I support libraries. So to have a Senator say that in front of all of his staff, and then he also kept his word because when we lobbied him, we wanted broadband. He promised that our AD libraries that didn't have it would get it and he delivered. And he delivered because Montana librarian did not stop lobbying him Somebody called his office every month at least, invited him to. So you have to do that. The people that I interacted with as a staffer were those people, those librarians that came to see me, like Richard Lacey, uh, Lois and Fran, uh, Jim Beach, uh, Steve Weiss from Utah. The people that called every week or came in to visit with the staff and would go to lunch with this, with me and the staff director. Uh, you know, if you share a lunch and wine with somebody, you're more likely to remember them. You know, some of my friends like the, the Miller Lite better than the wine, but so that is my advice now to all of you. After this meeting, make contact with your member and that member's staff. I'd like to just add one more thing that, um... You know, at least during my time, and I know Fran touched upon it briefly, but um, despite some of the uh, people uh, in charge of GPO at the time, the, the folks that worked there, the, the staffers and the printers and the binders, every one of those people were just fantastic people. I know most of you don't remember Willie, who was always the guy behind the scenes for Depository Council. You know, when I broke in, council would stay up half the night writing resolutions and they were mimeographed. So just 
kind of show you how how that's all stuff all that stuff went but you know people like joe mcclain and and uh you know uh, everybody Bill else Robert. that i came across there were just wonderful robin uh, everybody you know that worked there fran fran was a great superintendent of documents you can pay me five dollars next time you see me fran. Um, <laughs> you know but it, it it was always you know it was always one of those deals where the folks at gpo were always willing to listen to us and work with us regardless of the current administration. And sometimes we had friendly, sometimes we didn't, but at least we had the GPO staff that always had our backs, it seemed like. So uh, mm -hmm. shout out to all of them as well. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That, that is right. The GPO staff are incredible. And yeah. uh, people like Lois Mills and Barbara Smith, who called themselves the librarians in tennis shoes, they would get up at the council meetings and so on and, and would tell the truth about what was going on. And I remember one time, uh, Mr. Fossidal, who uh, he, he was upset because somebody said something bad about Lois. And uh, I, he, he went to that person and said, you don't say anything bad about Lois. And so, and then she and Fran served on the Joint Committee on Printing Advisory Committee and were very, very influential in educating staff and members. So, so, and also you have to recall that we've had at least four superintendent of documents who were members of Godort. So that is evidence of our influence mm -hmm. to get uh, librarians for the first time made superintendent of documents. And also Carl Labar, my hero, was from Montana, I'm from Montana. We are both used to telling the truth. That's what you do in Montana. No matter how painful, you tell the truth. And when I first went to brief him after he was appointed superintendent of documents, because his predecessor, Wellington Lewis, had basically lied at the uh, appropriations hearing and got fired within four days. And then Carl was appointed. I went to meet with Carl, explained what had happened, what the previous superintendent had promised, do mark, go into OCLC, the whole bit. And he said, oh, Bernadine, don't worry your pretty little head about this. I said, I'm paid to worry my pretty little head about this. So I will be coming and meeting with you every week. I'll give you six weeks to start straightening things out. And then after that, I'll have to go to my chairman. So he saw, I said, I'm from Montana. He said, okay, all right, Montana women are tough. I think GovDoc's women are tough too, so. <laughs> can I ask, can anybody reflect on the state and local document side? Because this has all been about federal depository. But I, I, I think that that's one of the things that Godor does and particularly with notable documents is highlight the things that the state is doing and and the and the state groups that exist because of that and the low and the need for local documents uh curation well margaret lane really was very interested in state documents and she organized what she called the committee of eight so each of us we had regions that we followed up with and and you know, had contacts in every state to see what the condition uh, was, how, you know, how, what kind of programs they had, um, how they were organizing their state publications. So at that time, um, at least, and that would have been in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, you know, we, we did spend a lot of time with, with state publications. I'm not sure what the case is now, but she was very instru instrumental in, in keeping that state and local documents at the forefront. Yeah. Well, in state Michigan, documents uh, were very important to Godard. And we had, uh, for the first couple of years, we had workshops in the states all over the country. And mm -hmm. we would include state documents, local documents, international documents, because a lot of people like me was responsible for every level of documents. And as many of my colleagues were, 
So of course we were very interested in everything, which is why we didn't have the task forces compete with each other. Because if you, if you did all four levels, you wanted to go to all four of those task forces. Uh, and so, and, and Margaret Lane and Catherine Reynolds and, and others did an incredible job, that task force on state documents. Uh, I think we owe a lot to them and, and they need more prominence now. Uh, in Michigan, um, because of the influence of Godort within ALA um, and the Depository Council, um, we, when uh, after every meeting of uh, uh, the council or ALA meeting, um, Mar uh, Jenny Cross and Ann Diamond and I would sponsor meetings for documents librarians in the state to report on what was going on, to tell people, and uh, it built uh, in terms of uh, state and local documents, um, a, a, a cohesive group also within the state uh, that could lobby the state library about um, local uh, state documents. So the uh, there was a ripple effect of the activism within Godort, at least in Michigan that way, but I think other states too uh, that have uh, uh, active uh, Godort chapters. I th that's true because I think Godort was the sort of the pushing for that. I was I was in Virginia and we formed an organization and actually the the documents people ended up taking over the Virginia Library Association. Uh, <laughs> uh, they were very extremely active, um, but there were uh, Tim Byrne and uh, Susan Tulis and Barbie Smith were some of the ones that you know, when I was there that uh, we really pushed. And I think, I can't remember, it seems like Tim Byrne became the, the chair of the Virginia Library Association at one point. I have a question. You said Godart state chapters. Are there state chapters that are affiliated with Godart in Connecticut? We call it CT Godart, but we have no affiliation with Godart. No, the, uh, no, I would, if I said that, you know, they were, there were, okay. I think okay. the fact that there was a go to art, then their, their uh, organizations of documents librarians began within each state. And some of them were affiliated with their state association like Virginia. When I went to Connecticut, um, they were not interested initially. And I, I don't know what the situation is now, but they were an independent organization, not part yeah. of the Connecticut Library Association. Yeah, I will, I will add as um, membership chair, one of our projects last year was to identify the various state organizations that have like go to groups. And we've got a list with um, links to like their websites on the go to web webpage. There is a state and local government stock interest group that is headed up by uh, Megan in Rhode Island. And um, a recent affiliate is a state documents collaborative group, about half of which are Godart members. But Godart's been really good to give us space because I'm I work strictly with state documents um, to give us space on the website. And that group struggles because each state library is different, you know. Mm -hmm. And so the issues are often the same. But the resources and how we have to approach them and the resources we're given differ so greatly. So I appreciate uh, Jennifer mentioning the state docs group because, yeah, occasionally we feel like, you know, the redheaded stepchildren, but it is a, <laughs> it is a significant group and we can all help each other. <laughs> yes. And we probably need to bring it back into more prominence within the organization. So. Points well taken. So we did have a question about what the 50th anniversary celebration will be this summer. And so I wanted to invite Suzanne to unmute and share with us the plans for the 50th celebration if, if she's still on the call. Oh, I'm still here. I've just been listening. Um, there's so many great stories and I love to hear that there have been so many like rabble rousers <laughs> in Godort um, over the years. And I hope we continue to be kind of 
rabble rousers. Uh, so we are having a celebration. It's going to be at ALA Annual, and it's Sunday, June the 26th from 6 to 8 at the George Washington Masonic National Memorial, and that's in Alexandria. It's right next to a, um, a metro, and they have their own parking. So we're going to be having an event with hors d'oeuvres and drinks, and I'm working on a go door to bingo card, so there will be some entertainment. Um, we're also asking for some folks to be crafty and bring some table decorations in as well and showcase some of what we can do with the items that don't get claimed through discards. Um, we've got some crazy ideas of things we're going to be doing with microfiche for that. Uh, this is also going to be a pair paired with the awards ceremony and uh, all of that. So Dan, we expect you to be there and uh, hopefully eating some of the little sandwiches and chocolate covered strawberries. I'm on a diet, Suzanne. I'm on a seafood <laughs> diet. You know, when I see food, I eat it. So. <laughs> So we are just about at the hour, and I'm sure we have many on the call that will likely be jumping to other meetings at the top of the hour. So I just want to thank you all so much for joining us. This was wonderful, and I feel very inspired after hearing you all tell your stories. And I hope that some of us will be able to convene in D.C. I know I'm 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 I have some trepidation about traveling, but I'm really looking forward to um, reuniting with some of these folks. So thank you all so much. Thank you for organizing this. Thank you. Yes, and we will be post, we'll, yes, it will, and we'll post the um, recording to our lib guides and I'll share the link, but if y'all want to do it again ever, just let us know and we can schedule another one. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>